This is Smart Poker Study episode 204, simplifying the top 10 poker HUD stats. In the prior strategy episode number 203, I discussed how recording and reviewing poker play sessions is the number one strategy that you must employ. It's poker study time, y'all. Thank you once again so much for tuning in and for telling your friends, of course. I love you and I appreciate all that you do for me. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, go down below, hit that subscribe button, and then ding that bell so you get notified as soon as a new podcast or a new training video hits the YouTube airwaves. And speaking of ringing the bell... I want to give a huge shout out, a big thank you to my newest Patreon supporter, Gregory Mantooth. Thank you so much, Greg, for your support on Patreon. It's people like you that keep me keeping on. I really do appreciate it. Uh, to start your own support on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy or click on the link within the show notes page. When you go there, you'll see that there are different levels of support with different rewards attached. And with October coming right around the bend, some new rewards are coming your way. As soon as you start your support, you'll have access to the prior Patreon-only content that I've put out there in the past. And of course, as soon as a new one comes your way, you'll get notified via email that it's available for you to consume. So again, please visit patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy to start that support. So let's get to it. This is going to be a great podcast for all of you online players. Uh, Today, I'm talking about the top 10 poker HUD stats, but I'm going to work to simplify them for you. There is so much to think about when you're getting used to using a HUD with Poker Tracker 4 or Holden Manager 2. Um, And even for you old hats out there, uh, simplifying the stats today, it's going to help you out in your games. Please visit the show notes page for everything I discussed today, along with screenshots and links at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod204. And when you go there, you're going to see a video where I demonstrate today's challenge. It's right there embedded in the show notes page. All righty, Phil Ivey, gambate! Oh, we can handle it. We're professionals. Now look, this is going to get weird, all right? It's, It's pretty freaky, but it's safe. There's no reason to be scared. Oh, no, no, daddy don't get scared. Really? Good. So this whole episode was inspired by a quote from Albert Einstein. Here's what he said once. If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. My goal for today is to simplify the top 10 HUD stats so that you can get more out of your HUD, starting with your very next session tonight. But before I get to the top 10 HUD stats, I really want to make sure that you understand the various percentages that uh, that you'll find in your different HUD stats. So a percentage is simply a part of a whole. And once you understand the whole, you understand that smaller part. For example, $1 is 100 cents. So 50% of $1 is 50 cents. One hour is 60 minutes. So 25% of one hour is 15 minutes. Now those are easy holes that we've dealt with our entire life. We understand those. When it comes to HUD stats though, the percentages are parts of two different holes. Holes that we don't often think about outside of poker. The first hole is the number of starting hand combinations that you can be dealt in No Limit Hold'em. And the second hole is the number of opportunities presented to the player. So we'll talk about the first one right now, the total number of starting hand combinations. You can be dealt one of 1,326 starting hand combinations in No Limit Hold'em. The stats that relate to this whole number are VPIP, PFR, raise first in, 3-bet, and fold to steal. Let me give you some quick examples right here. 10% of hands would actually equal 133 combos. Or to make the math a little simple, we could just round down 10% is 130 combos which means 20% is 260 combos. So 30% is 390 combos. Or we can round back up just a little bit to 400. So 30% is 400 combos of hands. Now let's go back to that first number, 10% or 130 combos. And let's look at this in relation to somebody's raise first in statistic. So if they have a 10% raise first in, maybe that's like an under the gun range, right? 10% 
10% is probably something like pocket fives or greater, ace 10 or greater, king queen suited, and king jack suited. Now those hands are exactly 132 combos, which is right at our 10%. But what if somebody has a 10% call two bet statistic? Well, this is still 130 combos, but it's probably not going to have aces, kings, pocket queens, or even ace-king, because people do 3-bet with those hands quite a bit. So a 10% calling range is still 130 combos, but it might be made of hands like pocket deuces through jacks, ace-10 through ace-queen, queen-10 queen suited or greater, and 10-9 suited or greater. So these were both 10% of the total starting hand combos, but the cards within each range vary based on the preflop actions taken. Now, the other hole that we use for HUD stat percentages, it's the number of total opportunities present. Now, these are stats like fold to 3-bet, C-bet, and fold to C-bet. So, let's look at the C-bet stat. If somebody's C-betting at 70% means they C-bet, or continuation bet, 70 times out of every 100 opportunities. It's important to note that most ranges hit the flop with a pair or better, and a good draw about 35% of the time. So if somebody's c-betting at 70%, half of the time they're c-betting with worse than top pair, weaker draws, and complete bluffs. Now before you draw this conclusion with everyone who c-bets at 70%, it's important to consider how frequently they have the opportunity to c-bet. Somebody raising only 10% of hands pre-flop, like that prior 10% raise first in range that we discussed, they get to the flop less often, but with a stronger range of hands. That 10% range it often flops top pair or better, and good draws about 40% of the time. If they c-bet at 70%, more than half of their c-betting hands are top pair or better and good draws. Conversely, somebody who plays 50% of hands pre-flop, they get to the flop and they hit top pair or better and good draws only 29% of the time. So if they c-bet at 70%, more than half of the time they're doing it with weaker hands and draws. So here's a rule of thumb for HUD stats. The higher the percentage, the weaker their range. Now, somebody playing 50% of hands and c-betting at 70% is much weaker on the flop than another player who's playing 10% of hands and c-betting that same 70%. And we could look at the flip side of that general rule. You should be more inclined to believe the person who has the smaller range. Alrighty, I am just about to get to the HUD stats, but first, here's a question for you. How do you know a stat percentage is reliable? As you gain experience looking at and using stats to exploit your opponents, you'll begin to gain a sense of when to rely on a stat and when to ignore it. But that doesn't help those of you starting out right now. Let me give you some hard numbers. Stats are not so reliable at 10 opportunities. They begin to become reliable at 20 opportunities. At 50, they're very reliable, and at 100 opportunities or greater, they're extremely reliable. So a 10% 3-bet seems high if you just see that total number. But if it's only 1 out of 10 opportunities, it's not that reliable of a stat. It's just not enough to say that this player is a 3-bet bluffer. If it's still 10% over 50 opportunities, it's likely that they enjoy 3-bet bluffing, and at 10% over 100 or more opportunities, you've definitely found a 3-bet bluffer. Now it's time for the top 10 HUD stats. Like I said, my goal here is to give you simple explanations for each. Here are a few guidelines that I give myself for simplifying the stats. I'm only allowed to give you three sentences per statistic. I'm going to assume that you know some common poker terms. For example, positional awareness or in position versus out of position. I'm also assuming that you know the definition of these stats and how they're calculated. For example, I won't define what 3-bet is, um, and I won't give you the exact formula for it. So everything I'm about to tell you is geared towards people familiar with HUD stats, but they might not know how to use all of the stats in the HUD. Now the top 10 stats are broken up between 6 pre-flop and 4 post-flop stats. And I'm giving these to you in an order of importance. So if you can only use one stat in your HUD, it's the first one I give you. If you're only allowed to use two stats, it's the first and the second, and so on. Here are the pre-flop stats. Number one is VPIP, or voluntarily put money in the pot. Here's my three-sentence explanation. 
The key word here is voluntarily, and this stat refers to an exact range of hands they choose to play. A VPIP greater than 40% indicates a very loose player that you should try to play hands against. Make sure to also keep this stat as a pop-up displayed by position, because positional awareness is an important indicator of your opponent's skill level. Statistic number two, PFR or preflop raise. Here are the three sentences. This is a sign of overall preflop aggression and includes two bets, three bets, and beyond. Anything over 25% is too aggressive and must be fought back against with value three bets and bluff three bets if they're capable of folding. Also, keep this as a positional pop-up because, again, it's an indicator of their positional awareness and how strong they are as a player. Statistic number three, RFI, or raise first in. Here are the three sentences. This correlates exactly to the range of hands that they choose to open the pot with when they're first to act or it's folded around to them. Keep it as a positional pop-up because this will tell you exactly which positions they choose to steal pots from. Positionally aware players have an increasing raise first in stat as position gets later, with the cutoff, button, and small blind numbers being the biggest. Statistic number four, preflop three bet. Here are the three sentences. As a total percentage, it's useful in your HUD, but takes on greater significance when it's broken down by position in a pop-up. Percentages by position less than 3% indicate a strictly value-oriented range, and you should only four bet or call with your strongest starting hands. Anything greater than 6% by position tells you where they like to three bet bluff from, so plan for it and respond accordingly. Statistic number five, two bet, then fold to three bet. Here are the three sentences. Make sure to use the two bet, then fold to three bet instead of the regular fold to three bet stat, because this gives you more relevant information that you can use to exploit the preflop raiser. If it's over 70% buy position, then you can make very profitable 3-bet bluffs with good bluffing hands like suited blockers, suited connectors, and pocket pairs. If the stat's below 50%, you only want to value 3-bet against them, or bluff when you're in position with good blocking hands like suited aces and king-queen suited. And the final preflop stat, number 6, fold to steal. Here are the three sentences. Great stealing targets have a fold to steal above 70%, and the higher it is, the better. At less than 70%, look at their 3-bet and their 2-bet call stats before stealing from them. You can multiply the fold to steal stat of the small blind times the big blind to see how often they fold together to steals. So that is it for the preflop stats. Now, observant listeners might have noticed that I left out the attempt to steal stat, or ATS. It's not a necessary stat because this is the same as raise first in from the cutoff, the button, and the small blind. And you should have these in a pop-up, so there's no need for attempt to steal uh, because it just takes up space in your HUD. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash smartpokerstudy. They have over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Of course, they have my books, How to Study Poker, Volume 1, Volume 2, and my latest book, Preflop Online Poker. And they've got tons of other poker books there in Audible so that you can start learning as you're doing the yard, as you're walking the dogs, as you're doing the laundry, whatever. With audiobooks, you get to learn while you're doing some other stuff. So please visit audibletrial.com slash smartpokerstudy to start your free 30-day trial and get your free audiobook download. And speaking of books, Frank Tanner left a lovely review, a lovely five-star review on Amazon for my first book, How to Study Poker Volume 1. Here's what he said, hands down, most bang for the buck. I learn something every time I reread it. No doubt if I would put into action all of Sky's suggestions, my win rate would improve. An outstanding teacher of the game. Well, thank you so much, Frank Tanner. I really do appreciate that review. And of course, 
please keep putting into action all of my suggestions. Even if you don't put into the action like uh, suggestions from the book, in every one of these podcasts, I issue a challenge at the end. Just put that challenge into action. Gradually over time, if you even just do that one challenge a couple days a week, you're going to be improving your game guaranteed. All righty. So another shout out goes out to Jeremy Time for uh, purchasing my Smart HUD. He just went to smartpokerstudy.com slash smart HUD, picked up the HUD right there. I sent him a few videos, uh, Poker Tracker 4 and HUD usage videos to help him get the ball rolling. And I'm sure those videos along with this podcast is going to send Jeremy off on the path of opponent exploitation. And a final shout out goes to Guy Brooks, who purchased my uh, Poker Mathematics webinar. It's actually not just my webinar. I did this webinar with Mark Warner over there at ExceptionalPoker.com. Really good guy, really knowledgeable. We totally hit just about everything math-based within this webinar. So if you want to pick it up for yourself and bone up on those math skills, just go to the show notes page and click the the link right there. Do you want to quit your job and live the life of your dreams? Masterpassiveincome.com teaches you how to invest in real estate rental properties, which allows you to make money even while you sleep. My brother, Dusty, he is the founder of Masterpassiveincome.com. He was able to quit his job at just 37 years old, and he can teach you how to do the same. And I'm learning from him as well right now. Still listening to those podcasts and going through his training course. Haven't purchased my first property, but I'm gonna. And I'll let you know when that happens. Please visit masterpassiveincome.com slash free course to get your free real estate investing course that's gonna help you start investing in real estate just like the rich do. So don't wait. Please visit masterpassiveincome.com slash free course to get started in learning about real estate investing. All righty, back to class, poker people. So we finished the six pre-flop stats, and that means we are on to the final four stats, the post-flop stats. Number seven is flop CBET. Here are the three sentences. This is the part of their pre-flop raising range that fires a bet on the flop. So the smaller their pre-flop range, the more likely a C-bet is for value. 70% is a quote, standard percentage, unquote, for most solid players. And because ranges only hit flops at 35% on average, a 70% range contains at least 50% marginal pairs, bluffs, and semi-bluffing draws. Keep this stat in a pop-up as well so you can exploit any difference in C-bet percentage when a player is in position versus out of position. Stat number eight, turn C-bet. Here are the three sentences. This is the famed double barrel stat, which tells you whether or not a player is a one and done on the flop or if they fire that turn as well. Compare the flop with the turn stat to see which street they get honest on as the honesty street has the lower percentage. Again, relative position is useful. So have this in a pop-up for in position or out of position honesty. And remember, most players see but more frequently when in position than out of position. Statistic number nine, fold to flop C-bet. Here are the three sentences. The higher and closer to 70% this number is, the more honest they are versus C-bets, which makes these players good bluffing targets. You want to view this by relative position and actual position in a pop-up because seeing these will tell you when the opponent is most honest so you can make profitable bluffs. The wider their calling range is pre-flop, the more marginal pairs and draws they'll have in their flop calling range. And the final stat, number 10, fold to turn C-bet. Here are the three sentences. Compare this with the flop percentage to see which street they're honest on versus C-bet, and make sure you have the chips and stack sizes big enough to bluff on this street. Fold to turn C-bet at around 60% or greater must be bluffed frequently. If below 40%, you can semi-bluff with your drawing hands and when in position, but keep your C-bets mainly for value when they hate folding. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. Pick one stat that you're not at all comfortable with and practice using it to exploit your opponents in your next session. Keep in mind the three pieces of info that I gave you on each stat 
and do some research on your own to learn more about it. The research and the learning are easy. The tough part is going to come from putting your knowledge into action and using the stat to exploit opponents. But the only way you'll learn how is by doing it. So do it! Now it's your turn to take action and do something positive for your poker game. Oh, that's it now. Get out there and be somebody. Go out a book. This episode is not complete until you head to the show notes page at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod204. When you go there, you'll find screenshots and links to everything discussed today, ways that you can support the podcast, and of course, you'll find that video embedded there where I demonstrate today's challenge as I play with a focus on aggression frequency. Thank you so much for listening today. If you have not done so already, please subscribe and leave a review within your favorite podcatching app. This is the best way, other than direct word of mouth, that you can help the show grow. And if you can type or say the word Smart Poker Study, you can find me on Alexa, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram. And please, send me your questions, sky at smartpokerstudy.com. Okay, poker peeps, in the next episode, number 205, I'm going to give you the five critical areas every No Limit Hold'em beginner must focus on. Word of mouth is the best advertising, so thank you very much for sharing this show with other poker people. Your sharing and caring is what helps us grow. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet.